Coming up on Ag Week TV, a new farm bill inches forward. We'll talk to area lawmakers about the progress. We'll teach you about a new tool to control fertilizer use and save money. We'll have some important early season information for soybean growers. And one community is going all in on hemp as a safe and clean building material. Welcome to Ag Week TV, I'm Emily Beal. The 2024 Farm Bill appears to be moving forward, but there are mixed views about how close the House and Senate are getting to the $1.5 trillion Farm Bill to the finish line. Jenny Schlecht has an update. Both the House and Senate Agriculture Committees have shared summaries of their Farm Bill proposals, but details haven't been released yet. Right, but hopefully this can be the basis for a good negotiation so that we can get her done. Senator Tina Smith of Minnesota, who serves on the Ag Committee, says she is encouraged negotiations are back on. There are some sticking points, including changes to the price loss coverage program and plans to take money from nutrition programs to cover improved reference prices. But Smith says the number one concern among farmers is crop insurance. One thing that I have been working on is to take a look at how crop insurance is working for smaller farmers, emerging farmers, uh, so that it can provide them with a way to mitigate their risks. And that includes looking at how to take that whole farm um, program, which was um, everybody agreed wasn't really working like it could have, and make some improvements there. This is a, an incredibly strong, fiscally responsible farm bill that really gets the job done. Representative Dusty Johnson of South Dakota, who is on the House Ag Committee, says the bill shifts money to programs that are working from some that aren't. So he says the bill will not add to the national debt. It's going to be a great product. It, it really, we listened to what we heard in these field hearings. We put the right policies into the farm bill that are going to uh, position, particularly rural America and farmers and ranchers, well over the course of the next five years. While both the House and Senate report progress, a timeline of when a farm bill will be passed remains elusive. And the course of discussions could change after the November election if a bill isn't passed before then. This is Jenny Schlecht for Ag Week. The 28 farm, 2018 farm bill expired last September. It was extended until this September 30th. Farming conditions in South Dakota vary between East River and West River, so it's important to have research and innovation on both sides of the state. In 2019, South Dakota State University started farming at its West River Research Farm near Sturgis. The 110-acre facility is used as a place to test farming practices and crops so that producers can learn and see how those things might work on their own farms. We are not too big to fail. We can take on lots of risky risky projects. Uh, we do some, some very kind of off the wall or, or unexpected crops. This year, the farm has a wide variety of research projects in a variety of fields, including organic crops, regenerative practices, and precision agriculture. With crop prices lower and fertilizer still high, producers need to find ways to increase efficiencies. An important one is using the right amount of fertilizer in the right places. As Michael Johnson reports in this week's Ag Week cover story, there's a new tool to simplify fertilizer recommendations. You might be applying too much fertilizer in places you don't need it, costing you too much money. There's a national focus on research about limiting fertilizer use to save money and benefit the environment without hurting yields. And there's a new tool that can help you make those decisions. Um, so when you should fertilize, and then the second part is what rate you should fertilize at. It's called the Fertilizer Recommendation Support Tool, or FIRST. SDSU Extension Soil Fertility Specialist Jason Clark says the goal is to increase soil testing and make fertilizer recommendations more consistent from state to state. I think understanding the process and seeing it as a farmer, as an agronomist, as a researcher, and I think be able to see it and visually know why some at the university would tell me my, I should apply fertilizer or not is helpful. First is a collaboration of 100 soil scientists and ag professionals from 50 universities the USDA, and several other agencies. As you add more data, it'll only get better. FIRST can potentially save crop producers millions of dollars a year in fertilizer costs. FIRST database is updated regularly and includes information from 2,500 phosphorus and potassium trials 
in 21 major crops. University of Minnesota soil scientist Daniel Kaiser says first will also be a tool of sustainability. Water quality stuff isn't going away. I think with P and K isn't necessarily as big of an issue. If you look at some of the reductions we've made specifically with phosphorus, it's been a lot easier than with nitrogen. But still, there's some issues there. Like the more knowledge you have, the better decisions you can make. This is Michael Johnson for Ag Week. You can read more, including where to find the first tool in the next Ag Week magazine or at agweek.com. Coming up on Ag Week TV, I'm at the Lower Sioux Indian community where they've been making houses out of hemp. Farm and City Kids, get ready for Farmers Union Camp. Enjoy sports, water games, team building exercises, theme nights, dances, cooperative learning, and more. Junior camps are held throughout the summer for kids in grades 3 through 6, and senior camps for grades 7 through 12. Free transportation provided to camp locations in Jamestown and Elgin. Register at ndfu.org or download the NDFU mobile app to sign up today. There's no easy button, no guarantees, or promises of a good year. This is farming. It's unpredictable and demanding with long days and sometimes stressful nights. It's weathering the storms and coming out successful. Farming isn't for everyone. We thank those who make it their life because it is for everyone. I like working for NRCS in Minnesota because every day is different. We get to work with a diverse group of farmers and ranchers. I get to work with a lot of unique individuals, different employees within NRCS. We have agronomists, foresters, range conservationists, soil conservationists, soil conservation technicians, and we are all dedicated to the job of conservation. NRCS in Minnesota is a great place to work. Spray Advantage is a full-line, full-service dealer with everything you need for fertilizer and chemical applications, like electronics from Microtrack and Raven, pumps by Banjo and John Blue, a full line of poly parts, tanks, and spray tips. We support the equipment we sell with factory-trained service technicians and a well-stocked parts department. It's our commitment to offer you quality products at competitive prices with the best financing options available. Spray Advantage, proudly serving North Dakota and Minnesota. Power Rich Fertilizer is a leading provider of macro and micronutrient fertilizers customized for you. Our products, including granular and liquid foliars, are designed to enhance your crop's yield and disease resistance. We're here to help you get the most out of your crop with our incredible products. To learn more, call Steve Gerolimic at 701-799-2672. Discover the Power Rich difference. Contact us today. Eating healthy can be expensive. One farm in Spearfish, South Dakota is working to help those with health conditions have easy access to healthy foods, even if they can't afford them in the store. For the past four years, people with chronic health conditions or at risk for chronic disease have been able to enroll in the food prescription program here at Budding Moon Farms. I started the prescription produce program because uh, I didn't feel like I was reaching customers who were kind of at the lower end of the economic uh, tiers in our state and us having trouble connecting with those folks. He started working with a dietitian at the local hospital and clinic to refer people who were on Medicare or food stamps. And those folks, if they're looking to improve their uh, health through a change in diet and not just medication, um, but they found that vegetables and fruits were unaffordable to them to make that change, then he referred them to me and they were able to receive that produce at a reduced or no cost. This year, the Budding Moon Farms is partnering with SDSU to expand the program to other farms in the area. Before this, the program was mostly self-funded by the farm or through donations from other CSA members. And so he tapped me in, we started writing some grants, and we received some funding from the South Dakota Community Foundation in order to fund this pilot year of the program. Lucan's Black is excited to see the eagerness to expand the program and watch it grow. <clears throat> I'm really hoping that it not only expands in our Northern Hills area, but hopefully across the state, uh, making connections with other farmers, uh, talk 
to them about just what the benefits are for their farm, not just for the people receiving the produce, uh, and find just more connections and collaborations with different healthcare systems across the state as well, and get get other people in the community excited about um, supporting their neighbors through this sort of operation. In Spearfish, I'm Ariana Schumacher for Ag Week. Budding Moon Farms grows around 60 varieties of vegetables and some herbs, all of which are included in the program. Hundreds of middle school students in Southern Minnesota got a taste of jobs in ag at a career exploration program. The kids got a close up look at ag opportunities in their region at Farm America's Ag Career Exploration Program. The students rotated to a different presenter every 20 minutes. Farm America program coordinator Carrie Wad says even though they are in the heart of farm country, many students don't know about all the career opportunities available to them. And this is a fun way for them to learn about some of them. Everything somehow leads back to the egg industry, um, whether it's food or materials. And so it's just nice to showcase or help introduce these kids and help them understand that all these different industries still have that egg tie. Ten businesses took part in the event, representing ag and animal sciences. The Lower Sioux Indian community in southwest Minnesota is using a unique product for sustainable housing solutions. As Kennedy Tesh reports, they are growing hemp to make materials for building their own homes. Yeah, it goes just as fast as any other build. After a decade of research and consulting some of the world's leading hempcrete experts, the Lower Sioux Indian community is growing a solution to the community's housing needs and providing jobs with a unique program. The Lower Sioux Hemp Program and Housing Project is filling several needs with hempcrete. We have a fully integrated uh, circular economy, if you will, um, here with the hemp program. Um, we are the growers, the processors, and the builders. They've been growing hemp since 2017 and started processing and building with it within the last couple of years. All natural building material with no chemicals or toxic materials and the waste is 100% recyclable. Hempcrete is just the inside of the stem of a hemp plant, uh, a lime-based binder and water and so it's all all natural building uh, material. And then it's also a carbon sequestering and a carbon negative um, building material. And so, I mean, it's, it's like a win-win-win across the board. Hempcrete also has high insulation value and is pest, mold, and fire resistant. And it's cheaper than other comparable products. Joseph Goodthunder is the agriculture coordinator for the Lower Sioux Hemp Program and Housing Project. He's also a farmer who is in charge of raising the program's hemp supply. Right now, they're growing 120 acres of hemp. He says it's easy to grow, and he's high on hemp as a building material. There's 25,000 different ways to use a hemp plant, and we're just kind of using it for one right now, but we're hoping to get into more mm -hmm. opportunities. In Morton, Minnesota, this is Kennedy Tesh for Ag Week. So far, they finished three houses with one more under construction and plans to continue to build. Ahead on Ag Week TV, we'll have some important planting and disease information for soybean growers. Do you have nutrient deficiency issues? We can help. Let's talk. Dig, lay, and bury drain tile all in one pass with the Crary Tile Pro Plow. The Crary Tile Pro Plow lays tile up to seven feet deep with boot sizes of four to 12 inches. Advantages of installing drain tile to your field provides increased overall yield, improved soil moisture levels, and controls soil erosion. It pays to tile with a Crary Tile Pro. To locate a dealer near you, visit www.crarytilepro.com. Do you have nutrient deficiency issues? Use Aqua Yield Nanotechnology. The nanotechnology is able to get in the plant quicker and faster. We apply it a couple different times throughout the year, depending on which crop it is. It's used, uh, like I say, in spring. We use 
it in furrow with the sugar beets. We apply some of it as a foliar late season in the sugar beet harvest. We apply it as a foliar and as in furrow with the beans too, so it can be used spring, fall, late fall. We've used it all the seasons. Let's talk. Visit us at ericksoncustomoperations.com. Attention farmers, increase your revenue and prevent compaction from squeezing your profits with PTG's Central Tire Inflation System, now offered at OK Tire and Service. All controlled from the tips of your fingers, ensuring increased yield and improved fuel economy by adjusting your tire pressure within minutes. You are ensuring the best performance from your tractor on the field and off the field, compatible with any radial tire. Call the OK Tire team today or visit OKTireInc.com to learn more. When it comes to grain storage and handling solutions, one call does it all. Gateway Building Systems is one of the largest Brock bin dealers in the U.S. Our expert team is dedicated to creating a customized plan for your future success. Expanding your operation has never been easier with our range of Brock solid bins, grain dryers, conveyors, and more. As your trusted partner, we are committed to serving the needs of farmers. Take the first step toward success and call Gateway Building Systems today. You got salty soils? Ow. We can help. Let's talk. Ag Week Weather is sponsored by Bremer Bank. Connect with a banker today at bremer.com. How will the weather fare as we head into the heart of May? Here's John with our AgriWeather Outlook. It's hard to believe we're almost to the month of June. As we look at the last two weeks of May, this pattern of very mild temperatures over most of the northern and central parts of the U.S. looks like it will continue. There will be the occasional hot day, but we've not seen big-time heat move north this year where it would linger for a while. In other words, no heat waves in sight, at least through the month of May. May showers and some thunderstorms will continue, but it continues to be a relatively benign pattern. Northern areas, the bigger storms have been further south. We'll show you, though, toward the end of this period, as we get toward the 1st of June, there are some signs of summertime weather waking up and once we get hot and humid, you start worrying about those June thunderstorms into some areas of the northern plains in the upper Midwest. As far as uh, the start of this weather forecast period goes, got a jet stream trough through the uh, Rocky Mountain states. I'm not including the subtropical dread in this discussion. Just to simplify things, it doesn't have much of an impact on the weather over North America. There is a weaker branch of the polar jet stream that's way up north, which is one of the reasons why really cold weather has been largely absent from the region. But instead of remaining warm or hot, those temperatures around the upper 80s and 90s, those are actually going to get pushed a little bit southward this week. Jet stream coming southwest to northeast with waves on it will bring good chances for showers and in the warmer weather, a few thunderstorms. But once we get a modest cool down through, we're settling into a generally mild weather pattern across the northern plains and the Great Lakes and the upper Midwest and much of the Corn Belt, only getting into consistent 80s a little bit further south. South. Just not a lot of really hot weather showing up with this weather pattern. Jet stream diving south into, south into California, not likely a very wet pattern for the far south. There will be some showers into the Pacific Northwest. And as we ride into the second week, which is now going to be uh, after Memorial Day weekend and into the last few days of May, it remains fairly mild. There are some indications, though, of some ridging in the west and central, which could bring some warmer temperatures to these areas. And that would then in turn cool down areas over the Midwest and the Northeastern states. This uh, first week of the forecast looks fairly wet, just showers, mostly northern plains, a stray thunderstorm. Most of the heavier storms and thunder showers will be down through the southern plains and the Middle West. And then the second week, we're not seeing a big change in the overall shape of things. Showers, thunder showers, and a few storms from the northern plains across the Great Lakes and the northern part of the Corn Bean Belt, the southwest part of the country will likely remain dry. It was October 1st, 2009. We needed some machinery for the farm. We decided to see if we could become a dealer and that's kind of grown into what it's been today. We offer basically anything short. 
seed tenders, fertilizer spreader sprayers. We can really set ourselves apart by the knowledge we have in those things, by the amount of units we have on hand at all times. I just have a passion for helping people, um, getting to know people. It just becomes a lot of fun. There's no easy button, no guarantees, or promises of a good year. This is farming. It's unpredictable and demanding with long days and sometimes stressful nights. It's weathering the storms and coming out successful. Farming isn't for everyone. We thank those who make it their life because it is for everyone. I like working for NRCS in Minnesota because every day is different. We get to work with a diverse group of farmers and ranchers. I get to work with a lot of unique individuals, different employees within NRCS. We have agronomists, foresters, range conservationists, soil conservationists, soil conservation technicians, and we are all dedicated to the job of conservation. NRCS in Minnesota is a great place to work. At Vatterstad, we're partnering with North American farmers to create the perfect emergence. We're doing this with new and innovative tillage, planting, and seeding solutions, optimized for the field conditions that you face, and with industry-leading capacities to help you get the job done in short windows of time, so you can maximize yields. Vatterstad, we look forward to growing together. Hey, Farm and City Kids, get ready for Farmers Union Camp. Enjoy sports, water games, team building exercises, theme nights, dances, cooperative learning, and more. Junior camps are held throughout the summer for kids in grades three through six, and senior camps for grades seven through 12. Free transportation provided to camp locations in Jamestown and Elgin. Register at ndfu.org or download the NDFU mobile app to sign up today. Ag Week TV Soy Insight, brought to you by the North Dakota Soybean Council. A mild winter and early spring should set the scene for early planting, but that's not shaping up to be the case for many soybean growers. As Rose Dunn reports in this month's Soy Insight, there are some things growers should be thinking about as they get ready to plant. What was shaping up to be an early spring for planting has been rain delayed for many soybean growers. But agronomist Sarah Lovis says the rain is needed and for the most part, planting is still right on average. And she emphasizes it's important to take the time to prepare a good seed bed. Everything from the nutrient planning to making sure that we've got seed treatments in the right place, um, uh, thinking about the right planting populations, Lovis says if you didn't do soil sampling in the fall, this is a good time to check phosphorus and potassium levels. It's also the right time to be thinking about iron deficiency chlorosis. Really, it's the calcium carbonate equivalencies that um, are going to be the best predictor of where iron chlorosis is going to occur. It is the bicarbonate produced um, when, when moisture hits that calcium carbonate that will shut down the iron uptake mechanism of the soybean. She says it's important to pick the right seed variety for iron uptake. Increasing planting rates in those areas will also help take up iron from the soil. Conversely, she recommends reducing populations in areas with white mold. Because much of the region has been dry, growers might be tempted to plant deeper. But NDSU Extension Research agronomist Leo Bordelon says that could cost yields. He suggests depths of about one and a half inches, no deeper than two inches. Do it. I will hold a little bit and wait for, for the moisture because uh, it will pay the cost later because seed cost is a little, it's expensive right now. So. But he says the most important thing might be before starting, complete planter and air seeder maintenance to ensure efficient planting. But take a look in the planter um, because seed placement is very important. Bordelon knows farmers are anxious to get going, but he has one word of advice. Which is patience. In Fargo, this is Rose Dunn for Ag Week. For more information or questions regarding planting, farmers are encouraged to visit with their local extension agent. Still ahead on Ag Week TV. The northern lights were beautiful, but they caused some problems for farmers.
For home delivery of Ag Week, log on to agweek.com or call 800-811-2580. You got salty soils? We can help. Let's talk. It was October 1st, 2009. We needed some machinery for the farm. We decided to see if we could become a dealer, and that's kind of grown into what it's been today. We offer basically anything short line. Seed tenders, fertilizer spreaders, sprayers. We can really set ourselves apart by the knowledge we have in those things, by the amount of units we have on hand at all times. I just have a passion for helping people, um, getting to know people. It just becomes a lot of fun. Do you have salty fields? Try calcine. We've been putting it on some of our worst spots and every year you see more bushels, greener crop, healthier crop. Some land down by the river that almost had to take out of production. We've been able to use calcine and bring it back to equal to the rest of the fields. Calcine mixes with basically anything. We put it down with our starter fertilizer. We've mixed it with herbicides. We've applied it broadcast. We've applied it banded. So it's worked in pretty much any capacity and there's no volatility issues. So it's very easy to use product. Let's talk. Visit us at ericksoncustomoperations.com. Dig, lay, and bury drain tile all in one pass with the Crary Tile Pro Plow. The Crary Tile Pro Plow lays tile up to 7 feet deep with boot sizes of 4 to 12 inches. Advantages of installing drain tile to your field provides increased overall yield, improved soil moisture levels, and controlled soil erosion. It pays to tile with a Crary Tile Pro. To locate a dealer near you, visit www.crarytilepro.com. Integrity, excellence, teamwork. At Titan Machinery, we take care of our team. Whether you are an experienced technician or looking to start your career, Titan has a spot for you. Earn a competitive pay with the potential to make in excess of six figures. Service techs, come grow with a company that invests in you. Titan Machinery offers company HSA and 401k contributions, free single healthcare and a generous tool allowance. Plus, we'll provide all of you uniform and safety gear. Apply today at titanmachinery.com careers. Do you have nutrient deficiency issues? We can help. Let's talk. People in the country got the best view of the spectacular Northern Lights show last weekend. But the solar storm produced the stunning show also temporarily caused a radio blackout that stopped progress in fields for some across the northern plains. In fact, for years, Kansas State Ag Economics professor Terry Griffin has been talking about how weather in space could impact agriculture technology. He says it was the first widespread GPS outage where farmers knew what was happening, but he says it will not be the last disruption. <laughs> Stories you'll only see on agweek.com and in Agweek magazine this week. An ag lender survey showed a rather negative first quarter of 2024 for Northern Plains agriculture. And experts explain some important points in grazing management. We appreciate you watching Agweek TV. Remember to check us out daily on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok to keep up on all your ag news. Have a wonderful week, everyone.